The leader of Burundi's main opposition party, the National Freedom Council (CNL), says he will return to Burundi as soon as possible because the country needs his contribution to national development. Agathon Braza left Burundi over the weekend for Tanzania when a faction of the CNL announced his removal for allegedly failing to unify the party. Braza tells me that democracy is at stake and that the international community must help to prevent the worst from happening. You know, we are in a banana republic somehow. Minister for Home Affairs manipulated some guys and pretend that they organized a national convention. But uh, according to the, the laws of the our party, only the president of the party or his secretary general can call for a, a national convention. It is uh, just a game they are trying to play, but uh, which proves enough that democracy is at stake and that everyone must stay alert and help prevent the worst in that Burundi. Because if chaos would once again come into that land, I don't know what should be the outcome. Will we just be like Haiti or what? We don't wish that to happen. That's why we have appealed to each and everyone to try its best to use its influence on this one or that other one to make sure that Burundians, mostly CNL members, can we can enjoy our rights as citizens and as Burundians. They have accused you of uh, failing to unify the party. Your comment? Why should we try to divide our party and then pretend that I am against the unity of the party? We thought about a meeting where everybody was invited. That minister refused. This was in August. And lastly, we convened for a national convention. The other same minister refused. We have a letter for that. And how can he go on with his puppets, pretend that he's the one for the unity of the party? First of all, mingling within internal matters of the party in order to what it, divide it, is a proof that he's against the unity of Burundians and mostly against a strong CNR a united CNL. That's why he's moving forward to try to, to weaken CNL by dividing it. Mr. Raza, you know, Burundi holds election next year. Can you form another party to contest the election? I think that's what be the better way to fight against this dictatorship of Burundi. 2025, the day of the day is a way that Burundians are fed up with its malgovernance and all the ill treatment they are making to Burundians. They are quite convinced that they cannot win. So they want a so-called democratic election without any competition. That's why they are doing this. But I assure you, there is no election without CNL. Before I let you go, sir, your removal took place uh, when you were out of the uh, country. Are you back already in the country or do you think you will be allowed to return? I must be back in Burundi. That's my motherland and it's my right to live in my mother country. Who can say you are no longer a Burundian? And for what reason? I think that if they fought by doing so, I could remain in exile. They have just uh, gone astray themselves. I have to go back to Burundi where my family lives and I cannot be separated with my family for just some fishy reasons of those who are ruling and who have failed to deliver properly according to the promises they gave to Burundians. That's why I must be there because Burundians need me and I want Migrants whose asylum claims are rejected by the United Kingdom will be given Euro 3000 to move to Rwanda. The UK has already has a plan in place which pays failed asylum seekers to return to their home countries. But the new measure targets those who cannot return to their countries of origin, local press reported Tuesday. The cash in exchange for moving to Rwanda is just another scheme in Prime Minister Rishi Sunaki's ambitious plan to stop illegal migration. It does not replace the plan to deport illegal arrivals to Rwanda, 
which has been blocked by courts over concerns about the East Africa country's safety. To sidestep the court's concerns, the government introduced a bill which seeks to rebel rather a safe country. Last week, the proposed legislation suffered a major setback after the House of Lords passed five amendments, which it ratified would make it harder for the House of Commons to declare Rwanda safe and would require the government to comply with domestic and international law. The bill compares judges to regard Rwanda as a safe country and gives ministers the power to disregard parts of the Human Rights Act. For accepting to receive deportees, Kigali has so far, has so far pocketed US dollar 300 million from London. After numerous court cases and international outcry, no deportation flights have taken off under the deal struck in April 2022. Prime Minister Sunak has vowed to press ahead with a plan. Thank you so much for watching and peace.